So recently I've been working with Geek Displays, uh, specifically these ones right here. This is using the SSD 108, uh, the SSD 1608 driver. And uh, they also have versions that are slightly bigger. And you'll find these e-ink displays in loads of different projects. Uh, there's a smartwatch called Watchy that uses them. Uh, these type of displays are used in a lot of um, grocery store chains and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe like how the display drivers work and how to hook them up. So this is just going to be a quick example of going from 1 to 2 and you'll be able to see how the display actually transitions. And in the next version I'm going to break it down slowly and explain how this is actually happening. So an e-ink display is basically a screen full of a liquid with two inks in it. One being white and one being black. And whichever one's on the surface depends on what the charge is. So when there's a different charge applied, one will get repelled and one will, will attract to the screen itself. And because of this, this explains some of the weird things of when it transitions between black and white. Now I'm going to show you the exact same example and see if you notice something weird between going from 1 to 2. So what you see is that when it's going between 1 to 2, it actually completely inverses the colors. Instead of being a back black one with a white 2, it starts off as a white background with a black 2. And why it does this is it's trying to create an even charge between the black and the white pixels. So what it does is it inverses it and it slowly wiggles this way until it's completely inverted. And it does it this way because it's trying to prevent stuck pixels which is when the panel actually becomes charged and then they will not be able to actually change their colors later down the line. Now we can make this go faster and here's an example of that. Here the frame rate is around uh, 3 frames per second instead of a frame every round 2 seconds. So now if you want these faster speeds, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to load in a custom lookup table. Now the custom lookup table defines what the pixel should do in a given state. So what's the transition time between black and white and how many times they should do that kind of thing. It also might be called a waveform. Um, the, the best case is to look for examples online that have faster lookup tables because they can be tricky to actually make um, and you want one that's not going to get the screen uh, to have a charge. And once you've pushed up your custom lookup table or your waveform, you'll then want to update the screen with a display mode 2. Display mode 1 we'll use the default lookup table and display mode 2 we'll use the current one you've uploaded. So now if you switch back to display mode 1 to do a full refresh and to make sure your pixels don't get stuck, if you switch back to display mode 2 you'll actually have to reload your lookup table because it will not be saved. So that's the basics with that. Um, that's the basics of how these e inks work. Now we're actually talk about how to how to hook them up. Okay. So now when it comes to actually wiring the things up, um, the best way to go is most likely these little dev boards. And on the back of these dev boards, they have a little connector like this, and then you can just plug it into just about anything under here. And there's quite a few connections on there, so I'm gonna run through those. So, as you can see, we have Busy, Reset, 
uh, data command, chip select, clock, data in, ground, and VCC. Uh, so VCC is normally between three to five, ground's ground. These three pins are for the spy. And what they do is, um, there's three spy because there's no output on these boards, so it's just data in. Now, data command is, uh, I'll show you just in a bit, but basically when you want to write to a register, you write the first bit, and then, then the data comes in through this data control line. And then last, if there is either a reset or if you're refreshing the display, what will happen is the busy line will go low, and at that time, no more commands can be received. The reset line is, you know, just a basic reset line. So I've got a capture. All right, so we're going to look at the logic analyzer and see what's actually happening. So what we can see is we have uh, a command here, a command here, and then we actually have to pull the command line. So what's happening here is we're telling which register we want and then the corresponding data. In the data, you need to pull up this line, the command line, and then we have another command and then the data. We pull this up and same again. We tell what register we're writing, 24, and then 24 is the big data line. So we write all this data. And then what happens here at uh, register 20 is this is the thing that tells it to refresh the display. So here we write the command and as we write the command this busy line pops up and at this point you can't send any messages to the actual device until it's actually go down low again. So, or go down, yeah. So here, these are all, it's writing, it's refreshing the display. So, um, that's basically how the command, how the interface, the device works. Uh, I recently made a Exprino module to work with these devices, so I'll put that in the link down below. Uh, and that's it.